What is up, guys? It's Mateo's 2020 Politics here. Today, I wanted to discuss what happened last night. So, in case we don't know, last night there were a bunch of primaries across Kentucky and the state of New York for Congress, and even and even the United States presidential election. But Joe Biden's already presumptive nominee. So, I wanted to talk about what happened in New York's 12th Congressional District. That's my district, the Manhattan District. I know it seems so sensitive for me to talk specifically about, about one district, make a whole video on it, uh, and that district happens to be where I live. But so, it was something uh, rather interesting. It was a rather interesting case when compared to the other ones. So, it was a pretty mixed night in terms of how progressives performed in general. In New York's 16th Congressional District, we had Jamal Bowman, a progressive, beat out the incumbent corporate Democrat, who was endorsed by Hillary Clinton, Nancy Pelosi, the Congressional Black Caucus, and Chuck Schumer. He had been in Congress for over 30 years, and he still got beat out by Jamal Bowman with like 60 points, so that's great news. And then some bad news would be from, well, New York's 12th Congressional District, although it's a sign of weakness within the establishment. So, Carolyn Maloney is my representative. She's a corporatist who is for the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare basically, or private insurance, which is just the most the most centrist you can really get in terms of health care issues. And against her were three other candidates. They're all Democrats, of course. We had Suraj Patel, who was kind of your milk toast progressive candidate, you know, like he wasn't that progressive. He was he was for the Green New Deal and debt free college, but we didn't discuss too many other issues. Then we had Lauren a Oshcroft, who I actually voted for. I can't vote, but my mom voted for her since she kind of represents my vote along with her vote, since they're both progressives. So yeah, we basically voted for her. She was she seemed to be the mo the most progressive of all. She was for Medicare for all. It just overall sounded pretty populist, anti corporate establishment y. Then we had uh Peter Harrison. He was a housing activist and was for Medicare for all. So yeah, basically Carolyn Maloney and three progressives. What's going to happen here? Vote splitting, the biggest burden of all in presidential elections and other political races. So although you could say Carolyn Maloney won the congressional not renomination, I mean I knew that was going to happen because in Congressional races, the incumbent has a huge majority, especially in the primaries, because nobody knows who other, the other candidates are. Do you know what I mean? Like, the, the incumbent congressperson has all the name recognition, and I think that definitely gave Carolyn Maloney an advantage. In addition to that, she actually just got a plurality of the vote. You know, I think she got something like 41% of the vote. Then Suraj Patel, very, very narrow loss. I like the guy, um, but he wasn't actually who I voted for. He got 39%, so very, very narrow loss. It definitely shows that despite vote splitting, despite all of that messy stuff, progressives were very close to winning. So he got 39%. Then we had Lauren Oshcraft, who we voted for. She received 13%. And then we had Peter Harrison received 5 So what is so significant, significant about this? Why am I making a video about this? Because Carolyn Maloney got the plurality. Combined the three progressive candidates formed them into one progressive, they would have won. They would have won the race. That shows how weakened the establishment is. I mean, in 2018, when it was just one progressive candidate, Suraj Patel ran back then too, she had straight up won the majority, 61%. But in 2020, despite all the vote splitting from three different progressive candidates, she only got a plurality, which shows that we're about to win this thing. And I don't want to say we because I don't want to say all my, my viewers are progressives. In fact, I know some of you are straight up conservative. But it shows that progressives are very close to winning, at least in 2022. I mean, if big people like Carolyn Maloney nearly got defeated by three progressive candidates vote splitting, that, that shows something. It shows they're really weakened. And that that's the one thing I was worried for. I was worried that because there were three progressive candidates, they were going to really split the vote, and that's the only reason why she actually won, because she got a pretty small plurality, 41%. Now, there 
were some instances, of course, where the centrist candidate dominated. They won by a big margin in some other districts. And there were some cases where progressives straight up won. I mean, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez re-won nomination by a big margin. We knew that was going to happen, but it happened, which is not bad news. We have an interesting case in Kentucky, which I actually want to make a separate video on. And you can see overall it's a pretty mixed night. But there were a good amount of cases like this, where the centrist, more establishment candidate only won because of vote splitting, where they had a bunch of endorsements. I mean, coming into the election, they had all the name recognition. They were already the incumbent. So it's definitely a good sign of the future. See you guys later, and bye.